All right, guys, so we've just finished uh, steps three and four, and we have finished, uh, we have this in our hands, okay? So we've started putting in the option bearings already, which we've got here. Um, so you can see there, we've been greasing them up with Cal RC's Utter Butter, which is a uh, pretty good RC specific super waterproof grease the good stuff okay so um we've got the rest of this gear case to finish building so we've got the counter gear uh, which is going to be this little guy here and that's going to take a couple of bearings still haven't found my rag i have a rag somewhere ah this will do just fine. Okay, just need to get some grease off of my hands. Okay, now bearings. Okay, so we need two bearings. Now in case you're not, um, you haven't been following along, uh, just in case. Uh, I'm greasing these up because I do plan to actually drive this. It's not gonna be shelf queen. Um, I like to drive all my vehicles until, you know, the next new vehicle comes along. Uh, you know, like anything. Oops, I'm getting this all over my hands. Fingers again, of course. I don't know why I even bothered wiping my fingers. Um, but the grease is... The, the bearings come already greased uh, with a, a light machine oil. Or probably, I don't know, maybe it's a... Maybe a little bit thicker than light machine oil. But the racers, if you're racing on-road and you know dry conditions, you don't need to do anything like this. But if you're planning to drive this like as an actual rally car, you know, the way it's intended to be, um, then you'll want to do something a little bit more robust and get some heavy grease in there. Okay, so you don't need a gigantic amount. You can see I'm just using this handy syringe applicator. It's pretty good. Uh, could maybe just be a little bit smaller, but um, that's fine. And so we're just going to be, we're just coating both sides, just in case any water gets inside the transmission or anything like that. Okay, so there we are. So those that's stuck in place. You can see the, the grease also goes on the gears like that, okay? So you can see I've already done the spinning uh, of the gears just to you know, spread it, and you can see it gets nicely spread. So I've just gooped on, not a gigantic amount. You can see it's not overly done. Um, so there we are. Uh, now we're gonna get the other side of this thing. It's not gonna be this one. That's the actual chassis piece. And there's the other side of that same chassis piece. But this is the other half of the rear uh, transmission case, so. And as you can see, I haven't found my, or haven't even gotten up to, to get my uh, my actual model snips. So we're just going with what I've got here. I do have a couple pairs. I just, but my good ones just aren't handy. They're way downstairs. Okay, so now we've got the other square of sponge tape that's about right. And that is going to go there. I'm curious to see what the sponge tape is for. So the sponge tape is going to go there. Now, one way you can, if you're careful, you can use, actually, if you wipe the grease off your knife, you can get the tip of the blade and use that rather than your fingers. And where does that go? Right on the end of this plastic piece. So hopefully you can see that. I can just barely see it on the screen. Okay, now I can see it better. Okay, so now there's that sponge tape there. And... So the gearbox, there's another piece of sponge tape. Uh, 
having you go through this sponge tape. So I should mention, um, yes, we are on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, let's just search for Pole Position RC Gear on Instagram and Facebook, and you will find us pretty easily, I think. So this one, this one goes there, it looks like. And then this piece this piece will go there okay and we've got a this shaft which needs to be greased up a little bit Now, if you've greased the inside of the bearings, you probably the the inner the inner hole of the bearings, you probably don't need to grease that up too much. Now the imagine the plastic of the diff cases of the transmission cases is meant to grip onto the ends of these shafts. So they don't really need to be greased up, but I'm just doing it anyway. And that one goes in fat side first into there. And then, oh, we need to make sure we get some grease on that one. Oop, bearing slipped out. So we're getting some grease on this one. See how messy this gets. And then on this larger gear. So I said it before and I say it again, I, I do like this, this syringe type applicator. You can get them on uh, online shopping sites and whatnot. Uh, just to use with your favorite grease. I'm using obviously the Cow RC stuff. Pretty good, pretty handy stuff here. Okay, so now we're just sticking it together. Just making sure all the gears mesh properly. Okay, that's interesting. So it looks like Okay, I think that's right. <laughs> All right, so we have three screws that are going to be going in, three by tens. And we're using the uh, Tamiya uh, PH2 screwdriver, uh, which is the JIS size for three mil screws. Um, I went and bought the official Tamiya ones just in case, but it does appear that the PH2 is the same as uh, as the uh, JIS specified because it's um, there's this whole thing about the the screws being the right the right shape those the cuts on those angles there so. Um, does seem to to fit really well. I haven't tried it with any other screwdriver. I know, uh, like I have, you know, like you've got cheap ones. Um, a lot of cheap screwdrivers. They won't say PH2 or PH1, but uh, anyway, these these do. All right, so that appears to be everything for that transmission case. Okay, so attaching the rear damper stay. Right. So I imagine that's going to go there. Attach BA9 first. So attach these screw, the ball studs there. You can see the instructions. 
So attach these ball studs to these points and then the damper stay. Okay, so let's find the ball studs. So here's the ball studs. And then we find the damper stay. I imagine it's gonna be one of these black parts, one of the, it's off of B. So I think these are gonna be A pieces, aren't they? No, that's B. Ah, there we go. That's the piece that we need, isn't it? Yes. So I'm trying not to repeat myself, but just in case, um, well, I know I am repeating myself. I, this is my first Tamiya kit that I built in a very, very long time. So um, for you guys that have been racing Tamiya minis and stuff like that, this is not necessarily the video for you unless you really want to see how the kit goes together. Try not to cut my finger off. That's why I'm cutting away from myself. Um, so more three by tens. Okay. All right, so let's find this. So I'm using all the, I do have a 5.5 a driver, but uh, this works well enough, doesn't it? It's about as quick as a driver would take anyway. <laughs> So you want to be careful because I mean these are machine screws going into the the plastic. So you don't want you want to start off carefully. So you don't get them uh, don't get a crooked start, basically. And now we're holding it this way up, and we're making sure this little slot is facing up. And then is that right? Okay. I wonder what that little slot is for. It's certainly not going to be for a shoulder strap or anything. I do like that these screwdrivers are uh, magnetized as well. Not overly magnetized, but just magnetized. So if that's the, this is the damper stay, so I wonder what these are. Right, so yeah, I'm going to need a servo. I'm going to raid one from one of my existing kits. I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, um, I found a servo. It's just some cheap no-name thing, um, up supposedly 12 kilos at six volts, supposedly digital and supposedly waterproof. Um, those are my notes there. Um, the thing is, I'm going to have to power this up as well. So I might have to borrow <laughs> borrow uh, another car to just plug this into the receiver so that I can just have some power into it. Um, and the reason why you need to do that is so that you can have the steering set so it's neutral. And the idea of that is that uh, you don't have it set so that when you screw it all together, the steering is all the way to one side. You want to make sure that the steering the, the wheels are pointing straight ahead, at least approximately, so that then you can fine tune it instead of doing major tuning. So you want to basically be able to um, get this attached. Um, now I did a, a couple of minutes of recording um, before realizing that the sound was completely off. Um, so basically I've clipped the, clipped the, uh, uh, the pieces off of this. You need to find the correct, if you're using, um, because this doesn't come with a servo, the, this steering mechanism here, you need to find the right size uh, piece, right size servo piece to fit onto your servo, which is this thing here. And there are three different sizes. This is particular one, I want to say is 25 tooth and these other ones are smaller in size so you probably can't tell maybe I think this is 24 actually I think this is 25 and I think that's 23 
So it just depends on the servo that you get, what size you need to fit. So um, on this one, that one won't fit. It's just, it's just too big. And that one's just way too big there. But this one just rides. There you go, see? And basically the, the, that output gear, that brass or whatever output gear uh, will be turning uh, the steering. And this is the servo saver that you're assembling in this step. Um, not that one. Not that one, that one. Okay, so B14 is the next thing we need. Um, but I think, well, what I was doing was that the reason why I'd flip so far forward was once the servo was installed, because you have to install it on all these braces, put the, put the pieces on, and then you install it in, the, in between the chassis pieces, which are these. So you can see there, that that there is that chassis piece, and the servo goes something like something, something like that. Is that right? It's quite high up. So I was just trying to see if you can actually, if I can just sort of skip a couple of steps and just have that like that. But you can, it's going to be way off center and not going to be able to actually access it. So that answers my question. So I'm going to have to uh, set the neutral position on this thing now. So a bit of a bodge job now. I don't, didn't really want to uh, do it this way particularly. But you got to do what you got to do. So I still do need to find a battery then. Okay, so I plugged the servo into a, uh, another kit that is operable and can you hear the, you can just hear it, <laughs> hopefully. Um, that's that servo working. So now that is in uh, the neutral position and just make sure the steering trim is pretty much centered on this one. Okay, so now it's absolutely in the middle. So now I can unplug that from the power, and now that is centralized. So now that's that. And then unplug and turn off everything else. And carry on. Okay, so now you can go back to this step here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. They do give you a variety of screws to use, because obviously this being a Metal Gear servo, you're not going to be putting a plastic self-tapping screw in there. So it looks like an M3 screw. And somewhere in here, I think it's going to be an M3. Uh, first, we need to clip off some more pieces. Okay, so B14 which is, this is B, and there's 14. So you should be able to snap these off. And they come off pretty well, because that's the way they're designed to come off. So um, if you don't have a plastic cutters, which I still haven't gotten mine, but um, <laughs> you, uh, you'll be okay. So you can see how that attaches there. So you have the piece that snaps onto, the servo, and then this little uh, sort of C-shaped piece, and that's your basically a spring, acts as a spring, because this is your servo saver. Okay, so you basically have to put it on there and then sort of spread it 
you might need a uh, like a screwdriver flathead screwdriver to uh, spread it but you can use your thumb but uh, or screwdriver if uh, if it's a bit difficult okay so before we do that we're going to put these ball studs on there and find the sucker because these are going to be your steering linkage uh, connections so remember you're screwing into plastic so once you are flush um, don't over tighten it because um, you'll basically need to buy a whole new parts tree to get that uh, to get this servo horn piece because this is that's quite a long servo horn really it's quite a unique piece there okay and then this little washer piece goes on there and then basically you see the way this is arranged you just put it as vertical as close to that position as possible now you see it's not perfect on there and that's normal that's what you use your steering trim for okay so now that we've got the screw here this is the correct screw that's an m3 screw and we know it fits because we will do a little test fit there okay so now we've got uh, some thread locking compound blue is the type of thread locking compound you want just a little bit of a dab in there to fill the hole just slightly we're not trying to flood it in okay um, and then we're putting this on again back as close to a 90 degree position as we can and we've got the little plastic washer that it wants us to put on and then we're just going to wipe off we had some excess earlier and then there we go and we use the correct size screwdriver to put it in nice and securely and there we are okay of course now all that talk and i did uh, miss that tamia has a nice little handy guide here for using the correct type of screw so matched apart with the servo of course like i said it was before and they provide these different screws so you have to make sure you use the correct size screw so now that we've done that okay next step is to make some some steering linkages okay not my favorite part actually this is one of my least favorite parts of any kit build but there's only just a few here so it's not so bad so we need to make two which means we need four of these little ball cups notice i'm cutting away from myself because i don't want to stab myself and have blood all over my car kit okay And then we've got our pliers. And now these, they give you a length here of 17 millimeters and you can, it doesn't tell you, but this is a life size representation of how that is, uh, how far that is. You can also use a handy dandy uh, metric ruler. Okay, actually that's not a metric ruler. That's a metric ruler. Okay, so we're going to be using all that now if these were turnbuckles you'd be turning one side lefty loosey righty tidy and the other side lefty tidy hopefully that makes some sort of sense to somebody so we're going to leave four or five or six threads on either side and the reason why this is my least favorite part of building a car because this absolutely wrecks the ends of your thumbs so if these were turnbuckles and these are not these are just normal threaded links threaded rods um, 
if these are turnbuckles, I'd be turning this one to tighten it. I'd be turning it this way, but I'm turning it this way. And these are what are going to fit onto the uh, those ball studs on the servo. So just going to fast forward this bit. Okay, so we've gotten this one. It's a bit messy, but that's what uh, black marker pens are for. Um, that's just because I've, uh, it's really just painful sometimes to do these properly. So now what I've got there is about 17 millimeters. So one way you can check that is using the life size parts reference here. So you can see we're a little bit too close. So we still need to basically just back it off half a turn at a time. And you don't want to grip these too tightly, these ball cup ends. So that is almost correct. No, nope, still another half a turn on either side, probably. So that is pretty close. But I still think we need to go a little bit further. And then the trick is, of course, to uh, you're trusting that the manual is in the correct has it has it printed correctly. But that's what uh, our own ruler is for. So that is just about spot on. Okay. So of course, the magnetized uh, <laughs> work surface is magnetized. So now we're going to just check that. Is that right? Mm. Just about, just about. Those are half mil increments. Yep, that's, well, we're going to call it close enough there on that one. And then we'll do this one. So again, I'm going to skip ahead a bit. Okay, so there we are. We've got the second ball, uh, ball or steering linkage done. Little messy here, I'll be honest, uh, but you know, it's not going to be a show car, so I'm not too fussed about that now. But what I am fussed about is these scratches. So, just before we end this video, I'm just going to show you how to very easily hide scratches with, you know, the old trusty Sharpie. I can pretty much any, uh, any magic marker type marker will do. And there you go. You can't tell that that was scratched ever unless you have a really, really close look. And who's going to do that? Only you will know. So that's that. And then, as you can see, we're just going to finish step nine. So we're going to attach these. And then we'll be finished with step nine. Okay, so that is it. That is it for this step. Uh, we have done steps, looks like five, six, seven, eight and step nine and then we're on to step 10. So hopefully you found that helpful. I hope you have. If you'd have, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're at PoolPositionRC.com and uh, on Facebook, PoolPositionRCGear. On Instagram, at PoolPositionRCGear. All right, thank you very much and we'll catch you in the next video.